Cults are complicated. As a social group, cult members are connected by unusual influence networks and have the potential to commit deviant acts that cross social boundaries and ethical conduct. The idea of an individual joining any conventional group or club and using their entire savings and assets for the group slash club sounds absurd. But this has actually happened before, multiple times. So how is it that some cults are extremely successful in completely changing an individual and make them dedicate their lives to something that is what we, the observers, would attribute as utterly nonsense. How is it that a single charismatic individual can demand so much from other people? These are all questions that have been asked on multiple occasions. Today we are going to be talking about SPAC Nation, a black majority church where most of its congregation slash members are under the age of 30 years old, young and impressionable, with recruitment for members as young as 12 years old. So join me as we go inside the crazy cult of Spark Nation. I live a different type of life. Faith and not by sight And you couldn't tell but I just died But I feel like I've never been so I would like to say a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Coinsplash. Download for free in the description of today's video. Now, I don't know about you, but I've kind of always enjoyed the idea of, you know, building my own empire. Well, with Coinsplash, you can become your very own coin mogul by expanding your humble village into an empire. Loot other villages and spin a wheel to win coins. Play for free, spin to win, hack and attack. Download and build your coin empire now. Every level of this game is exciting. And the best thing about it is that it's free and super duper casual, whilst also being challenging, making it an extra rewarding game. Now, honestly, one of the things it is that I love about Coin Splash is <laughs> revenge. Now, the motivation of this game is essentially to attack all other villagers so that yours is the last one standing. And you can defend yourself by using shields against your village whilst in tandem attacking every little mother sucker who tries to take down your village. With a growing and bustling community, you can play against friends, meaning that you can attack and get revenge on the people closest to you. I like to casually attack my husband's village whilst we're sitting down and watching television together. It's that indirect sense of competition that really gets us going. You collect rewards every single time you open the game, meaning that there is literally hours of endless fun. And there are always awesome updates that bring new levels, new characters, and even more surprises. So if you're up for a challenge, download Coin Splash for free using my link down below and get 1 million coins, as well as 60 free spins once you complete the tutorial. So use my link in the description box down below if you wanna upgrade your tactical defenses and yet destroy 
everyone. Check out Coin Splash today in the description box down below. Thank you once again to Coin Splash for sponsoring today's video. So let's get straight into it. SPAC Nation Ministries, which stands for Salvation Proclaimers Anointed Church, is based in South London and is classified as an evangelical Pentecostal Christian organization founded in 2008 by Pastor Toby Adeja Boyega. SPAC is known as a form of prosperity gospel, believing that having faith will garner you material wealth. SPAC is a black majority church with most of its members being under the age of 30. In 2019, a report stated that members of the church had been in contact with over 1,200 individuals between the ages of 12 and 30. And the Sunday services for this church is held in high-end locations. So in fancy hotels rather than in traditional conventional church buildings. It was reported that SPAC operates in 12 of London's boroughs as well as other places such as Leicester, which is East Midlands, and Birmingham, which is West Midlands. SPAC reported that 55% of their congregation had previously been involved in some form of crime. The church is actually well known for attracting gang members or people who are gang affiliated with its designer aesthetic. And as well as through rap and R&B music, most specifically UK drill and grime. At the service, the rapper is experiencing the sounds of gospel drill. The artists are from gang backgrounds and still wear balaclavas as part of their act. The pastors who run these services are often seen in designer clothes as well as driving high-end cars. What's interesting about this church, which I would prefer to call a cult, and we'll explain why a little bit later, is the fact that between the years of 2017 to just towards the end of 2018, the beginning of 2019, Literally everybody was in full support of Spark Nation. We're talking media, we're talking politicians, we're talking the judicial system, as in the police force, etc., etc. They're extremely supportive of the church's operations and actually kind of encouraged young people to become a part of Spark Nation. Because it seemed as if Spark Nation was encouraging its members to leave the life of crime and completely change their life through worship. In fact, the church actually encouraged its ex-gang members to hand in their weapons, as well as illicit drugs during their services, which was then later handed to police officials. However, in June 2020, SPAC Nation actually changed its name to the Nixon family. Um, it's spelled N-X-T-I-O-N, and many people suspected that this was a rebrand due to the allegations that came up against the church allegations that we'll delve into a little deeper but before we get into what the allegations are and how it went so drastically wrong i think it's important that we understand the recruitment process of spark nation so that you guys can begin to identify why I believe it is very cult-like in their tactics of recruitment. So SPAC is known for visiting impoverished, majority black communities looking for souls with the promise of a better life. They seem to pick the most impressionable people under the guise of religious or moral superiority and then begin to invite them to lavish events to start the process of exploitation. It's even been said that they try to recruit children at secondary school and youth centers. Social media has also been a crucial point when it comes to recruitment, especially the one platform that is sweeping the world right now, but in turn has captured the minds of our young people, which is TikTok. There was actually a video that went viral to combat uh, SPAC Nation's overexposure on the TikTok platform, where they exposed the exploitive practices of SPAC Nation and named members of SPAC Nation specifically. Hi everyone, I've been receiving loads of reports from girls as young as 13 about these two Nation family recruiters, Zainab Kabir and Thea Marie. 
They're using TikTok to invite young girls aged between 13 and 16 to business brunches to become boss babes. For context, if you're aged 13 to 16, you're in year 9 to 11. The girls are then added to this group chat that's run by Anthea Marie, which has almost 500 kids in there already. And not once has she contacted any of their parents to ask for permission to be in regular communication with their child. This is a screenshot of Zainab asking one of the girls how old they were. And the girls responded saying I'm 14 and obviously realizing that she might be too young for whatever the opportunity is. And Zainab responds with the younger, the better. What kind of predatory language is that? This is literally what grooming looks like. So once they're in the group chat, Anthea Marie organizes these free brunches for the minors to attend under the guise of female empowerment and working on your goals and networking. But really it's just to lure them in to join SPAC Nation and move into their trap house. For those of you that don't know, the trap house is basically the mansion that they all flaunt on social media. It's literally where all of them live. And by all, I mean 20 plus people in this shared accommodation, which is why you don't see the bedrooms because they're cramped up in there. But they will show you the outside. They'll show you a young kitchen and a corridor. My thing is, if you've got this shared accommodation with 20 plus people living in there, grown men, grown adults, why is it that you specifically want 13 to 16 year old girls to move in? What are you trying to do to them? I want it to be very clear that what we're witnessing right now is child trafficking. So please, please keep your loved ones away from these dusty two. So after seeing this video, one thing that stood out to me immediately was the fact that they used Telegram. Now, if you don't know about Telegram, girl, I'm about to tell you. Telegram is a social media platform much like WhatsApp, but the groups on Telegram are by invitation only. Telegram has been connected to CP rings as well as the dark web and other places of that nature that you can share depraved things and acts without being under the watchful gaze of mainstream social media. Now you have to ask yourself, is it weird that this church is using a social media platform that is heavily encrypted and practically untraceable, such as Telegram? in order to conduct its recruitment. Trap houses, a term used by gangs for a drug house. This term, however, means something different to the SPAC community. Trap, standing for take risks and prosper, are homes set up by pastors and used as safe havens for young members of the congregation. The idea has been praised by politicians and is a step forward in addressing London's deadly knife crime epidemic. Unfortunately, safety has become a major cause for concern when abuse allegations began to rise up. So in one of the videos that went viral surrounding SPAC Nation and these abuse allegations was a video that unfortunately I can't show you, where one of the pastors at one of these trap houses was beating or whipping or whooping a member whilst reciting a Bible verse over and over. When questioned about this video that had surfaced, the church basically stated that it was a joke. The senior pastor identified in the video was Enrique Uadei, who has made several public appearances promoting the church and was even named by the Evening Standard's Power 1000 as one of the 25 most influential people under 25 in 2019. Soon after this video made its way onto Twitter, the victim, if you will, came forward to actually defend the church. He said, you can see in the video that I was clearly smiling. Me being pointed out as the victim is 
complete bull crap. However, I have to say that it is interesting to note that he was making this statement while sitting next to Pastor Enrique, who is the owner or the person who runs that alleged trap house. But former member TK, who knows the victim personally, states that it was anything but a joke. He describes the victim as vulnerable, who lives with depression and frequently self-harms. I know that he's very vulnerable, so it was easy for them to get into his head. He left the trap house for a short while after that video, but now he's back there. Despite conflicting reports, when Pastor Enrique was questioned by the Huffington Post UK, he denied that the video was even shot at a SPAC nation trap house. A church spokesperson called Daniel Ogoloma told the Huffington Post UK, these houses are rented by individuals and the church encourages individuals to take in people and help them. That is at the will of the individual. The church does not refer people to houses. It only encourages members to help others. In another instance, a 16 year old girl was allegedly abused by a member of SPAC at one of the live-in trap houses. When the church was faced with these allegations, the church came out with another statement. They stated they encouraged the victim to report the incident to the police, but they declined to do so. In March 2018, the incident was confirmed by SPAC Nation themselves when they stated SPAC Nation takes any allegations of misconduct, assault or violence amongst our members extremely seriously. The full details of this allegation, which is alleged to have happened back in 2016, was only brought to some of our leaders' attention by the woman in January of 2019 of this year. As a result, we have encouraged a young woman to report the incident to the police and we have offered to do so on her behalf. However, she declined. I mean, it's very interesting to me that they said they offered to do so on her behalf, but she declined. I would think if you were, you know, running an organisation and, you know, very gross misconduct, regardless of, you know, what parameters that is, I would think it would be kind of a necessity for you to report on that incident, regardless of the individuals involved. Now, if she decides not to press charges or to take that further, that would be a whole different story. But reporting the incident is kind of fundamental. So when you approached her to ask if you wanted her to come forward or if you could come forward on their behalf, of course she was going to decline. Especially since you run a facility in her eyes that she doesn't trust. You're not to be trusted. So it's kind of like the burden of proof and the burden of responsibility has been placed on the young lady when in reality, it's kind of up to you guys to do the internal investigations and to get the police involved in making sure that this is a safe environment for everybody involved. Okay, yeah, there's one lady who spoke up, but how many of us is there? I don't know, just the wording of that whole statement just was weird to me. Now this was further confirmed to me about how weird everything surrounding these allegations were when Huffington Post UK had conducted an investigation and actually found a screenshot from Enrique where he'd asked members of SPAC Nation to retweet a denial of the allegations against the alleged man. These allegations however was refuted by Enrique where he said I did not sign silence any allegation. When it was brought to my attention, this was reported to the police, but was declared no further action. I do not have the power to silence anyone. I cannot defend myself against gossip, but I will defend my integrity. The fundamental problem it is that I have with these trap houses is that they are intentionally designed to house the most vulnerable and disenfranchised. You have to ask yourself how so many members who are under the age of 16 are able to to live there away from family members and friends. I know that in the UK you can move out of your parental home at 16 years old and essentially emancipate yourself from your parents. And whilst that is a procedure that can happen, it isn't encouraged. However, if you're living in a, a bad place, surrounded by gang violence, etc, etc, with the potential of even just having a bad home life placed on top of that, these trap houses could be seen as a way out of the hood. So it kind of made me 
totally understand how so many of the London boroughs had been so enthusiastic about SPAC Nation rallying behind them and standing behind them as well as local council and places like that because I imagine it alleviated the stress of the local authorities to rehouse and rehome these 16 year old individuals who were young and the most vulnerable and the most important to house. It seems as if SPAC Nation's trap houses was essentially a bandage on a very prominent problem here within the UK, which is our housing crisis situation and our dwindling council housing resources. They essentially believed that they were getting children off the street and getting them away from gang violence, knife culture, and all of that kind of stuff and placing them somewhere safe. But that residence, these trap houses, were not a place of safety. Day. This was an extremely insidious and predatory environment for the UK's most vulnerable young people. Considering these places are known as trap houses, take risks and prosper, what these people were actually doing is not providing prosperity. They were doing the initial acronym which is trapping these individuals. And nobody trapped members of SPAC Nation worse than Miriam Mabula. In May 2015, Mariam pleaded guilty to five counts of fraud. She was 26 and for the fifth time in her life, she was going to prison. After 13 convictions for offences, including 27 for fraud and dishonesty, and being imprisoned various times, a person by the name of Miriam Mabula joined SPAC Nation and ran a trap house of her own. In the documentary named Catch Her If You Can, Sarah describes how Miriam had asked her, as well as other residents of the trap house, to take out loans of up to £5,000 and hand over the money while she promised that she would keep up to date with the payments. My name is Sarah and Maria made me take out a 5k loan which I'm still trying to pay back today. On a Periscope broadcast for SPAC Nation, Miriam says, I said to my girls this morning, I don't know what you think is happening in this house. I tell you what to do with your finances. I tell you where you're going. It's not like you have an option. A house of order is a house that will prosper. Jesus. <laughs> You have to remember that a lot of these young people that were being housed in these trap houses didn't have any financial training. They don't know what long-term and short-term loans are, how to have and obtain credit. And this isn't a shit on anybody's, you know, education level. In fact, I'd go as far as to say that many young people in Britain do not know these things, regardless of vulnerability or how disenfranchised they are. So it seems very insidious and predatory to me, at least, that the only owners of these trap houses would do exactly what they say on the tin to trap these young people in debt. Debts that they'll have to deal with for multiple years. There are still people that haven't taken out, let me tell you the truth, there are still people that haven't taken out loans yet and I'm gonna go and find them, I don't care what you say, I'm gonna go and crush them. Why? Because they are there, they're looking, they want to, but they just can't hear me. Multiple people have come forward stating that they have been led on or scammed by Miriam Mabula and her many, and there's a lot of them, aliases. Spark has chosen to distance itself from its own trap houses, stating, just so you know, when people come to us needing help, Spark Nation only encourages members to take in those who have housing issues. According to what the Bible teaches, it is therefore not Spark Nation houses. These houses are rented by individuals and the church encourages individuals to take people in and help them. That is at the will of the individual. But this contradicts many statements it is that they have made prior on their social media. On their YouTube, they have stated, we have over 23 safe houses across London, housing individuals that may require a safe haven. Our safe houses are inspirational hubs providing mentorship and guidance 24 7. So is it SPAC Nation's trap houses or is it good Samaritans out here just helping the vulnerable and needy by taking what isn't even inside of their pockets? Which one is it? Pick a struggle. Over the past
past few years, Spark Nation has had multiple allegations levied against them. One of these allegations being how it financially exploits some of its younger members. Providing seed money is a very important part of being a part of the SPAC Nation community. Seed money is essentially the financial contribution that each member is responsible for giving to the church by any means necessary. So let's take a look at Toy Marie's story. In 2018, Toy Marie joined SPAC Nation at a very vulnerable time in her life. Life. Within a few weeks, she found herself confiding in her pastor, basically stating that she was experiencing financial difficulty. Her pastor, Pastor Jumbo, basically stated that she should take out loans in order to build capital and then in turn start her own crypto trading business. Together, they decided to take out loans. So she shared all of her personal information and details with Pastor Jumbo. And whilst they were applying for all of these applications, none of them were successful. At a later date, Pastor Jumbo asked Toy if she could help out with a financial transaction, which essentially would be transferring money from her own account to another person within SPAC nation another member to which she complied a few days later she ended up getting emails stating that she had electronically agreed to become the guarantor of two separate loans something about agreeing to be a guarantor for five thousand pounds guarantor I in all honesty didn't actually know what a guarantor was because I'd never had to be one for anyone. When she confronted Pastor Jumbo, he apologised and assured her that he would help with the loan repayments. She then learned that multiple loans to the sum of £10,550 had been taken out under her name without her permission. She said, I felt like I was targeted. I feel like they took advantage of me. I feel like I was deceived. Lied to, they knew I trusted them. Toy then decided to send an email to SPAC. A meeting was then held with some of the senior members of SPAC Nation and they came to the conflict resolution of Pastor Jumbo offering an apology and £550 towards the total of the repayments that needed to be done under her name. But besides that, no other repercussions have actually been given to that particular pastor. When Pastor Jumbo was contacted by the Huffington Post, he stated, from the allegations, the individual and myself had a previous agreement solely to do with business relation and nothing to do with the church. Everything was communicated and since then has been cleared up. These actions that have took place have continued to this day to affect her current current credit score. This is one of many of the accusations of fraud that have been levied against Spark Nation. In fact, so many of its members have decided to come forward with their allegations anonymously due to safety concerns and implications that they may face with the church. Now, this is where things get really interesting. In 2019, some allegations came forward against SPAC Nation for requesting some of their members to donate blood in order to generate income for the church. Until our seed year, until it's a thing we're bleeding for this, I'm talking about bleeding, do you get? bleeding for this thing we're not gonna be taking the places we're meant to like it was uncovered that young members you know the members who probably are unable to get a job before the age of 18 were requested to donate blood for medical trials in order to donate that money as seed to the church they decided to name the act bleed for seed and it has been described as a vampire like exploitation young members of the church informed huffington post that they could be paid up to a hundred pound for a blood donation and then that donation money is handed directly over to the church allegedly some of the senior pastors had encouraged this behavior until pastor toby decides to put a stop to this act even if you give 50 pounds the way they will look at you, that like, you, you won't feel like, you won't even feel like to give 50 pounds, you feel like you have to give more. Therefore, they will feel like they're competing. 
but like god get me to a level where my seed i'm bleeding for my seed because i know i'm a sower but there's a level of bleeding like god my seed unless it costs me, unless i know i'm bleeding let me tell you so i know when i'm bleeding a lot of times in the past i've hit target but i know i haven't bled there's a seed that I'm sowing now that it's gonna cost me my blood. Younger members of the church have basically said that there were like WhatsApps and group messages of them sending photos of themselves donating blood for seed money and it had become a very normalized practice within SPAC Nation. Reporters have actually spoken to at least five members who have spoken out about this blood sacrifice practice. Specifically, a former member who is 22 years old spoke to them stating we all actually used to do it it started with the leaders of the Croydon fellowship they wanted to give blood and took a photo so a lot of people followed and then did the same it was a quick way of making seed she said adding a lot of leaders were actually encouraging it until pastor Toby said we couldn't do it anymore as I'm sure he knew that if it came out that we would look ridiculous another teenager shared bleeding for seed the blood thing it was like once a week community unit services are on a tuesday before tuesday service everyone would meet at the love house trap house and then a few people would go and donate blood afterwards they would go to the service at the love house they were donating blood for money it was a way to get seed Interestingly enough, the Love House Trap House is actually ran by, you guessed it, Miriam Mabula. A member of Parliament, Steve Reed, has actually said that he had two members approach him and this is what they said to him. What they said was that in both cases, a pastor pretended to be a young person's parent, went with them to donate blood for which they would get paid, signed a consent form as the parent to allow the blood to be given and then when the money was handed over they took it back to SPAC Nation. It was about 30 pounds ago. Obviously it wasn't the young people's idea to give blood. It sounds like they were pressured into selling their blood for the church. I spoke to young people who absolutely sickeningly were taken to private clinics to sell their blood with a so-called pastor pretending to be their parent to sign consent. Now, the reason I refer to this bleed for seed practice as a blood sacrifice, because in the Bible, a sacrifice is defined as giving up something precious for a cause or a reason. It's also considered as making atonement for something it is that you've done, such as a sin. In Leviticus 17.11, it states, God said, I have given it to you, the creature's life, which is in its blood, to make atonement for yourself covering you for the offense committed against me. In other words, those who were covered by the blood sacrifice are set free from the consequence of sin. It is my feeling that the normalization of blood sacrifice within the Bible is exactly how they promoted it to its congregation members. It's just a theory, a speculation, but knowing what I know about the Bible, yeah, this seems like the way they probably got these people to <laughs> make this weird decision. So, what happened to Spark Nation? Well, in 2020, Toby Adabojega decided to step down from Spark Nation and handed its reins to two of its senior pastors. Despite stating that he is stepping down, he still states that he is still leading the church. I've spoken to the church, I've spoken to the public, I've attended many interviews and I've given the reasons for stepping down. Very simple, handing over to the next generation is what Africans or churches must now learn. I'm still leading Spark Nation, by the way. I have my protégés and my sons. They are now the faces of it. I would allow them to make their decisions. I will allow them to make their mistake. I want to see the next world leadership in politics, in finance, and of course, in business and in church. It seems as if Toby still probably has his hands inside the pie, which is Spark Nation, but he just doesn't want any of the repercussions. I imagine him dictating what goes on from afar. 
Again, just my conspiracy. But I know what you're thinking, criminal investigations. Surely the police have finally stepped in for something it is that they promoted so very heavily in 2017 to 2018. Well, no. Following the Huffington Post investigation into SPAC Nation that went so very viral, Scotland Yard stated that it will not launch a criminal investigation into SPAC Nation despite call outs from the House of Commons to do so. The Metropolitan Police were informed in 2019 of the allegations of fraud, as well as other offences that have been associated with the church. In a comment to Huffington Post, the police stated, officers from Central Specialist Crime carried out a review to identify if any criminal offenses have been committed. The review is now complete and no criminal investigation has been launched into these specific allegations. However, during this review, detectives identified two separate similar allegations of fraud reported in different parts of London. These allegations relate to the actions of individuals and not the actions of the organisation and are being investigated by detectives locally. Now obviously Spark welcomed this decision at the time, seeing as they have consistently denied any form of wrongdoing, stating, We believe the police have come to a fair conclusion following their inquiry. So the disenfranchised members of Spark Nation, these vulnerable individuals who have been consistently reporting and making allegations against the church and its members for several times, didn't have, in my opinion, any justice served. However, in June 2022, SPAC would end up in high court and then shut down for failure to account for 1.87 million of outgoings and operating with a lack of transparency. Ah, so the people in the allegations, doesn't matter. But hey, you hid money from us. Their financial expenditures basically stated that they had rent of over £610,000, whereas they don't actually have an operating base. Because as I said previously, they've used various different venues and hotels all across London. In 2018, they reported 1.17 million income and 1.19 million in expenditures. So to put that into comparison, in 2016, 164,000 was reported. We also have to remember that because SPAC Nation is operating as a church, as a religious entity, because of that, they don't have to pay taxes. Just put that in your peripheral. The Insolvency Services Chief Investigator stated, while SPAC Nation claimed to have noble intentions to support vulnerable and young people, our inquiries uncovered a different side of the charity. There were clear concerns around how the church group managed its affairs, and SPAC Nation failed to properly account income received from donations and other expenditure. Another company linked to SPAC Nations under SPAC Nations Limited also has failed to produce any documentation with active counts overdue. Mm -hmm. So what's my conclusion? My conclusion is that Spark Nation is a cult. From its recruitment techniques to its exploitation, the utilization of children and minors, to its influence of the disenfranchised. Spark Nation was looking for a target. They were looking to take over and corrupt the minds of London's youth. And they almost got away with it. They were endorsed by police force. They were taken to number 10 Downing Street. They conversed with politicians and rubbed shoulders with some of the most influential people in power in the UK. They were seen as an organization putting a stop to knife crime within London, showing gangsters and thugs a different way of life, taking young people from the mean streets of London and turning them into upstanding members of society. But what they were actually doing was creating trauma and long-standing damage to these individuals. Some of the most vulnerable members will still belong to this church and are probably still practicing congregation members of Spark Nation. But some of the members that have left, 
have left the trap houses, have left the organization, have left the church. They've left with debt, with marks on their credit score, with bankruptcy, with emotional damage, with trauma. But what is the most craziest part of Spat Nation to me is the fact that they do all this through the guise of Christianity. And it's crazy because there seems to be a lot of similarities between um, organized religion and cults. For one, the use of authority, honesty, likability and recruitment. Organized religion by nature appeals to society on the premise of divine authority. Honest in intent and practices, and the general likability and inclusion of its members. When you look at the structure of SPAC Nation, all of those fundamental values of organized religion seem to be implemented and highlighted as the most important, meaning that the vulnerable and the emotionally weak can walk into a situation feeling like it was going to be a place of safe refuge and to finally become saved. And the reality is they are going to become enslaved and indebted to the individuals at the top whether that's bleeding for seed, getting in huge amounts of debt, or receiving nice jewelry and watches and fancy cars to turn your drill raps about gun violence into worship and loving God. Prosperity gospel, the idea that you can generate material wealth through worshiping the Lord. And if there's one thing I know about Christianity and God, is that he sees these things as vain. It's vanity. Ecclesiastes 5.10 says, he who loves money will not be satisfied with money, nor he who loves wealth with his income. This is also vanity. Prosperity is about what you put into the earth, not what you're expecting to get back. Religion is about love and getting closer to God not about material wealth and things that we can't even take into the realm beyond. For now, it seems as if their numbers are diminishing, but I'm not entirely sure that this is the last that we will hear of the cult of SPAC nation in the future. Okay, so this is my first cult video. Oh my goodness. Um, I said to you guys that I wanted to take a look at more cults. Uh, this is a cult that I don't think is very well known, so I wanted to start with something that maybe might interest you guys. Uh, I just want to say a massive thank you to my researcher for helping me with this. This was friggin' dope. We've got another video coming out very soon, which will be to do with JK Rowling and Harry Potter and my thoughts about JK Rowling. Ugh. So if you guys are interested to hear my thoughts on that and that whole situation, I am more than happy uh, to do that. With that being said, I hope you guys have an amazing day or evening, whatever the hell it is that you're doing. Thank you so much to the Patreon family as well as to the Twitch family for holding it down whilst I've been on holiday. I really appreciate it. We had a great time. We went to Jamaica. Loved it. It was great. Much needed and welcome break, but I am so happy to be back. Thank you guys once again for watching today's video. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe. And until next time, you be amazing bad ass bitches don't get involved in the cult <laughs> bye I die daily, daily.